In this screencast, I'll be walking you through an Event Sentry version 3.2.1 installation, explaining some of the installation features as I go along. And here we have the first screen to accept the license agreement. Next, we have the installation directory for Event Sentry, which by default is Program Files Event Sentry, and you can specify a custom location for installing Event Sentry if you prefer. And here we have a few different options to choose from. The first is a Windows help format documentation for Event Sentry. The next is the built in database. And then we have the web reports, which are built on our web based reporting engine. And here you're going to select the area which you would like to store your database for Event Sentry. By default, this is in the data subfolder for Event Sentry. You're going to want to make sure that you store your database in an area with a lot of storage space because a lot of events will be written to the database and you want to make sure that you have plenty of room to save information to your database. You can also create a firewall rule for the built-in database which is on the Postgres SQL port of 5432. In addition to supporting Postgres SQL, we also support Microsoft SQL and SQL Express, as well as MySQL. If you're looking to get Event Sentry up and running for new users as quickly as possible, we recommend that you use the built-in database. For best performance, we usually recommend Microsoft SQL for your database, which then you can set up later during the installation. And here you're going to input a Postgres SQL admin password. This will be the password for the account that will access your database and be able to read and write and edit your database. So you want to make sure that it's a strong password. And here we have the port that you're going to specify for the web server to run on. By default, this is port 8080. This is the port that you will use to access the web reports from any browser. You also have the ability to create a firewall rule to allow web traffic on that port 8080. And if port 8080 is currently in use, you can specify a port of your choosing. Setup is now ready to begin. The web reports are downloaded during the installation from the Event Sentry website. You are able to download the web reports later if you are installing them on a machine without internet access at the time of installation. The setup wizard has completed, and now the Event Sentry configuration assistant will launch. This will also launch anytime you upgrade to a new version of Event Sentry. If you are upgrading to a new version, the configuration assistant would let you update the database schema, and also it would allow you to configure any new added features. And here you have the settings for the email alerts. They are set to medium volume by default and they are enabled by default. You also have the ability to limit the amount of emails per hour or per minute that you receive. And by default they're checked to 10 emails per hour. If you select high settings, this will result in the most emails being sent to you, any warning error or audit failure which is not excluded by one of our built-in false positive exclusion rules. On the low setting, no emails would be sent to you by default and you would manually have to specify which events you would like to get alerts on, so we feel that the medium is a good middle ground because this allows you to choose exactly what type of email alerts you would like to receive. And here, since you selected medium, you have the ability to customize the email alerts you would like to receive. By default, event sentry alerts are checked. Event sentry alerts will include such things as low disk space alerts, service stopping alerts, and high CPU use alerts. Then we have the generic system alerts, which are Windows system alerts, such as application crashing alerts, or related software, such as Microsoft SQL or Microsoft Exchange alerts. And then we have audit failures, which would be frequent, and those are self-explanatory. So by default, event sentry alerts are the only option checked. If you would like to receive more or less email alerts after your initial installation, you are able to customize your email alert settings after the initial installation. Next we have the SMTP server settings. If you leave these blank, event sentry will use the MX record to find the domain for the host email server. Next we have the sender email setting and the recipient that you would like to send to. The sender email by default will be set at dollar sign hostname which is the hostname variable. This will resolve to the computer name of any computer sending alerts from your domain. 
and then you have the ability to input the recipients that you would like the email alerts to be sent to. Here you will be setting the passwords for the two database users in Event Sentry, the Event Sentry service account, which is for the agents who will be writing to the database, and the Event Sentry web account for reporting, which will be reading from the database. In addition to entering your own password, you can have Event Sentry generate a complex password for you as well. And once you have this generated, you'll want to be sure to write this down. Here we have the database purge settings. By default, a database purge is enabled that will take place after 30 days of data has been stored in the database, and then it will begin purging daily at 11 p.m. The max database size is set to 10 gigabytes, but if you exceed that size setting, it will not prevent you from writing to the database. It will only alert you once you have gone over that size setting. You have the ability to keep data for a week up to an entire year in the database and then you have the ability to purge data at different times of day depending on what's convenient for you. Next you have heartbeat monitoring. This is enabled by default and allows you to monitor the uptime of a host through ping. It also allows you to monitor any non-Windows device through SNMP. And here we recommend that you use a Windows administrator account on your domain for the heartbeat monitoring. And For the sake of this screencast we're just going to use a local system account. Next we have the network services which are enabled by default. These will allow you to consolidate syslog messages from remote hosts such as switches, routers, and Linux machines. And it also allows you to consolidate SNMP traps and receive those alerts by email from any device that supports SNMP traps. And here we have the collector which is a new feature in Event Century 321. It's a component which enables a three-tier architecture in Event Sentry. The collector acts similar to a proxy between the remote agents and a service such as the database. Agents will only communicate with the collector over a single port, and the traffic can be encrypted and compressed. Database connection details do not need to be stored on the agents anymore, and all collected data is cached on the agents if and while the collector is unreachable. Whether or not you will need the collector will depend largely on your network setup. If all of your hosts are in the same data center or on the same LAN, the collector would provide little benefit for you. But if you are a managed service provider and monitoring remote sites and laptops, then the collector is probably what you need. And now we're going to set up the database and install and configure the services. And we're ready to launch the management console. This next prompt that comes up is asking you if you'd like to automatically check the status of your maintenance agreement and leverage integrated updates directly in the management console. Part of your license will be sent to netikis.net to enable this functionality. And we recommend that you use it. And here you have the Event Sentry Management Console. The Event Sentry Management Console is used to configure and deploy the configuration to the monitored clients. This is where you can customize what Event Sentry will monitor in your environment. You can quickly access the web reports to see any information being collected. And we're going to access the web reports now. And here we're setting up the web reports for the first time. These are the settings for accessing the database. As you can see, Event Sentry has automatically filled in the settings for connecting to the database and you can hit test connection to ensure that they are working correctly. And here we have the email settings. And here we have the access control settings which are enabled by default. This allows you to choose a username and password for access to the web reports. We recommend that you use the access control feature. If it is not enabled, anyone will be able to access your web reports. So you're going to want to make sure to remember this username and password that you select. And here you have the web reports. All of the data in the web reports will populate in near real time, except for certain performance data, which may take up to 15 minutes to populate. Thank you for joining us for this screencast on the installation of Event Sentry, and we'll see you next time.